make it a prayer. I came to worship you. I came to sing your praise. I came to love you, Lord. Your holy name to raise. I really your prayer today let's bow our heads and invite him to be here with us we just have a little short time together but it is your desire it's what's in your heart that makes him feel welcome you want the Holy Spirit to be close to you and make your heart open if there's anything that's in the way you have something way upon your heart just set it to the side now Set it to the side and say, Lord, I've come with an expectation and I, I expect that you will speak to my need. You will get what you expect. If you expect nothing, you will get nothing. But if you expect that the God of creation can speak to you, he will do so. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, as we have come today, the seasons are blurring together. They're going by so quickly. The phases, the seasons of life are going by so quickly. But Lord, there is one thing that grows brighter every day that is your word, that is the work that you are doing in us. So Lord, as we have gathered to together today and we are looking for what you would have for us, we bow our heads, Lord, and just make it known specifically, Lord, we want to invite you to be here with us. Lord, what point is it that we talk about you but don't invite you to be here? For God, we can talk about things, we can look at things, but when you make it live, it's, it's real, it's pertinent, it's relevant, and it connects with us. Wherever we happen to be today, whatever situation we're in, you are an ever-present God. You are help in our time of need. And Lord, there are many needs that are represented here today. But Lord, we believe that you're still a provider. You're still a healer. You're still our champion. It's an evil age, but God, the, the evilness is growing dimmer and your light is growing brighter. So Lord, we commit our, our few moments that we have to, today into your hands. 
ask that you'd have your way have your will lord in jesus christ's name we commit it amen praise the lord praise the lord it's wonderful to be together with you again today i greet you all you all i greet you all in the name of the lord jesus I pray that your testimonies have just multiplied since we've last been able to see each other. God is good, isn't he? We live in a season that the the world is just so obsessed with the darkness and the perversion. But isn't it incredible that in the midst of that, God just grows brighter, sweeter, more wonderful, more personal every day. You know, as much as we can talk or preach about it, I, I just, you know, saints, the more we see, the more overwhelming it is, truly. The more overwhelming that this message, the grandness of this message is. There are times when God just pulls back the veil a little bit more and you just want to go in a corner and weep. And at the same time, just scream and shout because your, your heart is so full, you just don't know what to do your, with yourself. Have you ever experienced that? It's amazing. Thank you, musicians. I appreciate the worship this morning. We're going to dive right into the Word here. I have a PowerPoint. I don't know how much good it's going to do us, because I don't know that we'll follow the presentation or the PowerPoint or not. Uh, I I do like to have, at least when we're quoting things, I know it's just much easier to kind of catch what's being said when it's written up on the screen. That's helpful to me, so I appreciate when ministers will do that. So we'll try to do that today, but I cannot, I cannot commit to you that we will follow exactly this order as I was praying. There's so many pieces to what God is doing right now that the challenge is, is not to find something to preach on. There is just over in abundance and more and more, and we could take days and weeks and months to focus on a detail. The hardest part is to say, Lord, what is appropriate for today, and what are we going to save for another day? Because it's so good, we want to look at all of it, But we want to make sure that we focus on what God sets as a priority for us today. So this is what has been on my heart. We're going to take a look at, by the grace of God, this little thought this morning. And it is a a window into many other things, but we want to take this one thought. And there's a few pieces in here which I believe might be helpful to you by the grace of God. We're going to pray that the Lord has his way. Precept upon precept, let's go to the scriptures which are very familiar to us, Isaiah 28. And as I I like to say, you know, I I grew up in a message, and I've been around um, preachers and message believers my entire life, and we've all heard quotes and read scriptures, but when we read the scripture, many times we want to read it like it's the first time we ever read it. Because there are times when the Lord will just bring out a detail that we might have read it for 50 years. And the Lord will take one word one day and just highlight it. And suddenly the meaning of that scripture begins to open up in ways that it never has. I know older ones today that are in their 70s, their 80s, and they're just saying, this is so, the things that we are seeing are so fantastic. I've been walking with the Lord all these years and it's, I've just never seen these things before. God can do those things today. Praise the Lord. Here in Isaiah 28, let's read verses 9 to 12. Again, familiar verses, but we want to read it by God's grace like we have never read it before. Isaiah 28, verses 9 through 12. Whom shall he teach knowledge, and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little, for with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people, to whom he said, this is the rest wherewith you may cause the weary to rest. This is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. May the Lord bless the word and you may have your seats. Again, there are many directions to go within these thoughts, but I want to focus on a few things. We want to build a little bit of a foundation like we always like to do. 
We want to make sure that we have a good bearing in the scriptures and that is in fact much of what we want to talk about today is making sure that we have a good bearing, that we have confidence in the scriptures. We want to have confidence in the message that God has given us in this hour and we don't want to go beyond that. There are times when we get so inspired by something and you know this is a, an example that I use often. This is an example that I use often but it is, it is so simple in that if you try to hit a target and you overshoot the target, overshooting the target is still a miss. But many times when God tells us something, he says, now do this thing, we get so inspired in us that we're going to do something above and beyond for God. Is, it, is that not true? There are times when we feel like we want to do something so exceptional that we want to give God an exceptional gift. But God says, I want exactly the thing that I've asked you for, nothing more, nothing less. There are times when we get caught up in depression and discouragement because we feel like we can never attain the things that God has said. We can never do what God actually said because we feel like this thing is, is bigger and it's farther away and it's bigger and farther away and the closer we get, the bigger and farther away it becomes. There's a part of that that's true. God is, is truly that amazing, but there's an element of it that we put upon ourselves, that we are, are trying to do something for God, we're trying to follow God's instruction, but as soon as we get close to it, in our minds, we don't think we're worthy of it and we make it bigger than it is. God did not give you something that's impossible for his children. It's impossible for everyone else, but it's not impossible for his children. He said, be thou perfect, even as I am perfect. And for anyone that does not have God in them, we would say, good luck. And we know that luck doesn't exist. Good luck. Because you can't. Because God is God, and he has done the things that he has chosen to do, and he has hidden them from the wise and the prudent. It's hidden. It's a secret thing. And when people aspire to be like God, aspire to know the message, though you might sit in a message church, though you might have grown up in the message, you might have parents that are, are believed that Brother Branham is a prophet, and that's a wonderful thing, it's a wonderful start. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now what? Maybe you sit here today and you've been born and raised in a message church, been around message people your entire life. What now? Friends, are... I believe that many are aware there are generations that are, are moving on. They're, they're being laid to rest in the ground. They're going off the scene. Those that knew Brother Branham directly. There are testimonies that are no longer being heard personally in the world. There might be recordings of them, but those individuals are going off the scene. Where is a generation that has a real personal experience with God that is so real that they can stand in front of the world with absolute absolute confidence and know that God is God and the message that God has given to them personally is real. What a challenge to a generation. We know that each generation has more temptation than the last. Those that are sitting here today that might be in your, maybe your late teens and your 20s, the challenge that is set before you is impossible without God. Thank the Lord, he said, all things are possible. Through Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ that strengthens me. He's doing the work. You are, if you, by, by God's grace, if you have given your heart to the Lord, if God has called you, you are God's people. This is God's work. You plant, you water, but who gives the increase? God gives the increase. So the generation that's sitting here, this is always upon my heart that those that have been raised in a message church, there are, there are unique situations, unique pressures. We take it for granted. We think that they don't have trials. Well, remember when we came out of a denominational church, my kids didn't have to go through that. But they have trials just like you did. They have different temptations. They have different trials maybe than what you experienced. And as you young people, young girl ones are sitting here today, God has something that he wants to do in you personally that the generations that are coming before you were held to a standard. They were given a responsibility to hold. And for you, it's going to be a little bit different. 
The world is changing. There are those that are, are coming of age. They're, they're being laid to, gra- to rest in the ground. They'll be raised when, when the, 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 the God calls them from the ground. But the, the generations that are going off the scene, something has to happen. Something has to take place. There has to be a generation that has a real revelation that goes all the way back to what God began and intended in the beginning. And it cannot be by natural inheritance. But how do we have that type of confidence? We want to have confidence in God's Word. Praise the Lord, then we read our Bibles, but the world reads their Bibles. The whole Christian world reads their Bibles. Nowadays, they might have different variety of Bibles, interpretations of the Bible, but they're reading a Bible. How is it that we don't agree? How is it that from message assembly to message assembly, notice I didn't say church, but from one assembly to another that believe that Brother Brandon was a prophet, believe that there's a message in this hour, how is it that assemblies don't agree? This is not multiple churches. There is only one church of God. There's only one true group of elect, and they are not separate. We are joined together, whether we like it or not, we're connected because our Father in heaven called us, named us, put something in us, and by that we are connected. There is so much that we can find fault with one another. I don't believe in, there are times where people say, well, you just have to have fellowship with, just because someone claims that they believe a certain way, then you have to have fellowship with them. Now, hold on now. This is what we want to, not this specifically, but this uh, idea of making an assumption we want to look at today and we want to build precept upon precept. Let me give you an example, a physical example of this. We're walking with the Lord and God has told us to go in this direction. But remember that Brother Branham told us that we are building a building, not a wall. Is that right? It's not just a straight wall. There's a building that's being built. And when God told us to go in a direction, we go in that direction and we we go with a confidence that God told me to do this thing. And we walk and we walk and God says, take one step and we take one step. And then we take another step. But God didn't say that. But God told me to go in this direction. But he told you to, go only so far in that direction. But if I take one more step, I'm gonna fall down the steps. God told you to go so far, and then he says, turn left. God's elect, catch it, and they move. And don't think for a moment that you cannot make a mistake. Don't you think for a moment, friend, that you can't make a mistake and find yourself out of the will of God. Because you can. Now, God, by his grace, grace is not going to leave you there. The identification of his children is that when he chastises his children, which means they're wrong, they're getting corrected. They might have stepped a little too far, but they say, oh, Lord Jesus, forgive me. If they've wronged somebody, they go to the person and say, brother, sister, forgive me for what I've done. I need to get back on the wall. God told me to go so far, but I took one more step and I fell off into my own will. I overshot the target. There are times when we read the scripture and we believe that God may legitimately have told us to go in a direction and we went in that direction. But God told us to stop or to turn and we missed it. Brother, it seems impossible because it is. It's impossible without God, without the tutor that God gave you, without the Holy Spirit, it's absolutely impossible to please God. It's impossible to follow his instruction. Let's continue on here. This is from... I wish I could take a picture right now. You remember the flies, right? One just landed on my Bible right here. 
you don't remember that story, my wife and I talking and a serious conversation with my wife and a fly comes up through the room and hits me in the forehead. <clears throat> well, now they make these guns that shoot salt. I don't know if you've seen those. I'll just kind of leave it there. 1963, the absolute. So I needed an absolute, so I took one, God's word. So I read in the word that <clears throat> he is the word, St. John 1, and upon this absolute, I'll build my church. Uh-huh, that's right. So I took him at his word, Revelation 22:19, 19, and said, whosoever shall take one word out of this or, one word, or add one word to it, that's the absolute. That's the end of all strife. Well, that's pretty simple, isn't it? We open our Bible, we read our Bible, and then that's that. All strife is done. Should be, right? Is that what happens? That's not what happens. This is the absolute. Just continuing on here from that same message. This is the absolute. Whoever takes anything from it or adds anything to it, God said, I'll just take his part out of the book of life. So that had to be the absolute. And Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. Then I know that this every word had to be said, precept upon precept and line upon line. That's the way it has to come, just as it's written. Praise the Lord. We all agree, I believe, with those statements. Line upon line, precept upon precept, we believe the word. Now, this is from Revelation chapter 5, number 1. So this is one thing that they might squabble about this in here, about what it is, but he's the one that divinely interprets it. But on the backside here, there's no one can do it. It belongs to him. It belongs to him and him alone. He's the one that can reveal those seven mysteries out and watch how every bit of it is on redemption how the church was redeemed and what will be the redeeming. So you mean to tell me that I can read this? I can read what is written in black and white. I can read the ink that is pressed upon these pages, but not read the book. I can read the front side of the book, but there's something more that has been written. I can memorize it. I can get to know it. I can read it front to back. I can listen to the message. I can memorize quote after quote after quote. I can understand and I can talk about the message and I can make connections and all of these things. But unless it's open, opened by him, unless it's opened by the Father, oh, Peter, where does this come from? Only from the Father, which is in heaven. How does this come? Only by the Father. Line upon line, precept upon precept. Amen. But friends, there are people that are reading line upon line, but they still cannot see precept upon precept. They're reading the front of the book. They're reading the pages of the book. They really, really want to understand but it can only come by the Father. And we cannot break our way into it. You cannot study your way into it. You cannot force your way in through a window. God gave a way, and you must come God's way, and you must make a request of Him. Lord, I desire to understand. As Brother Benham taught us, we didn't seek Him. He sought us. We're here because God has called us. Well, brother, I don't know if God loves me. I don't know if God really cares about the, me that much. Are you here today? Well, yes, I'm here. Why are you here today? Because there's just, I, I just really wanted to go to church. There's a desire in me. I want to do right. I just can't seem to do right. But if you want to do right, there's a deep that's calling. And if there's a deep that's calling, there's a deep to respond. It's that deep that we're looking to respond. We're looking for that deep from God himself. When he begins to respond, he begins to expound, explain. It's not reading the front of the book. 
There's more to it. Let's go to Hebrews 9, if you would. Let's see if we can continue to lay a foundation here that we might understand. Hebrews 9, <clears throat> appreciate your prayers, my voice will. <clears throat> There's times when, it, when, you, you, when you preach, it's really hard to hold back. Sometimes it's wisdom to hold back a little bit, but it's hard and the voice doesn't like it. So my voice is a little worn out. I, I pray you just, again, just pray for me if you would. <clears throat> Hebrews 9, verses 9 to 12. Give me just a moment here. I'm sorry, I wrote down 9 to 12. Let's go to verse number 19 to 24. Hebrews 9, 19 to 24. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book and all the people, saying, this is the blood of the testament which God hath enjoined unto you. Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry, and almost all things are by law purged with the blood, and without shedding of blood is no remission of sin. Let's read verse number 23 very carefully. It was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. For Christ is not entered into holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself now to appear in the presence of God for us. Verse number 23 again. It was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. The picture that we are understanding that is being explained, Moses presents the law. He presents the law in the Old Testament. They learn the law. They're trying to obey the law. These things are presented through Moses. They're being presented as as an example, a type of a heavenly pattern. But what is being explained here is that this this heavenly pattern, which is now Moses has set the law in order, has set things in order, there is something that is greater than these things, though these things are representing a heavenly pattern. These things are for a season, are doing a purpose, but there is within that a greater thing. It is not the natural that God is after, and yet the natural is representing a spiritual pattern. So let us say it this way. Within the line, there is a precept. So though you read the line, you may miss the precept. We read the precept, excuse me, we read the line, but if we miss the precept, we miss the message in the line. Brother, I sit in a message church. I've always believed the message. Again, going back to our thoughts for the younger ones that are here today. Or for my heart is, uh, uh, is always burdened for those that have grown up in a message church. That they might have such confidence. And it's the same situation. Where, brother, I sit in a message church. But what is within that? The young people know how to act. They know how to do the part. They know how to say the right words. They are a physically representing the physically written words. They know it. I I witnessed it. I witnessed those that would present on such some 
Some, were, some young people that I grew up with were so good at representing themselves to the adults that they were, they were really super spiritual. But I knew what was going on in their private lives. You see, the things that God is calling us to, it's more than, we know this, but I, I feel the need in my heart to say it anyway. It is more than presenting a good face. We know it, but friends, we still at times we get caught in it. And the moment when we do, we start to step beyond what God is calling us to. God has laid out these, these patterns, he's laid out the scriptures so that we might understand not what is written in black and white. There is something here that has been captured, written down, but there's within it, there's something that's so great that you cannot break your way into it. Is that simple? There's a heavenly pattern that this is what is being, being described here in Hebrews. There's a heavenly pattern, but now God is that representation. He is doing that thing literally. He is in heaven representing. He's given his life now in the book of Hebrews. He's given his life now, and he is, represent, he is, he is doing the thing that the Old Testament's represented. Yeah. It was written in the Old Testament. Moses gave the law, but the law was to represent something. And within the law was something so precious that it was hidden from the world. It was, it was wrapped around, it was hidden, and it was not explained until the last days. There's a mystery that's so great that you can read about it in the book and you can't get it. But I really want to know what God has for my life. But I really want to, to know so we read our Bibles and that's a good thing. We read our Bibles and we, we do what we understand to do. But what we're, by the grace of God, what we're highlighting today If I could say it this way, God's word is so simple. God's word is so real. For every person sitting here today, God's word has answers for every single thing that you have questions on. But we make it something that it's not. We look at God's Word and we change it, not intentionally. It doesn't matter how long you've walked with the Lord. Again, you could be walking with the Lord for 50 years. And when God opens a key to something, He opens up something in a certain way, it can change your life even now, today, right now. Well, it, brother, I'm already walking with the Lord. I've been born again. I, there, there, I know that God has done a work in me. I believe this message with all, with all my heart. Praise the Lord. But now where are you at? This is applicable for every single person that's sitting here today. The place where you are at right now, you can go further. We are growing up unto that moment where Jesus said, at the moment when the wheat is mature, it's cut down. At the moment when maturity, at full maturity is taking place, at that moment, God calls for us to, to leave this place. How do we get there? How do we know what the next step is? The challenge, the big question is always, what do I do now? How do I know? How do I follow the leadership of God right now, today? Hebrews, here in 24, we see this example of the heavenly. The heavenly pattern represented on earth, now here in 1962, presuming. Therefore, basing back in the Old Testament, I draw these conclusions for a little message now, presuming. Webster, I've got it wrote out here, Webster said, give me just a moment if you would. To presume is to venture without actual authority. That's presuming. Or in parentheses, he's got Webster taking it for granted. Just taking it for granted or to venture without authority to take something just for granted.
Now, that's something that the church must not do. You're not sure of yourself if you're just presuming or you're just taking it for granted. Well, Brother Branham did it this way. I'm just going to do exactly what Brother Branham did. I'm going to follow the Word. I'm going to do exactly what the Word says. Then why aren't we boat builders? Because the Word told, God told Noah to build an ark. Then why aren't we all building an ark? Why aren't we doing that? Now, we know the answer to that, but let's use it as an example. Why are we not doing those things? Because specific instruction was given. There was a requirement that was given, and it was the Word of God. And here is Noah building an ark, and of course we know that everyone disagrees with him. But Brother Branham gives give this, this example is in the days of Jesus, Jesus is walking on the earth where Jesus, if Jesus preached the message of Noah, it would have been wrong. How is that possible when the message that Noah received is the word of God? There was a message that was given to Noah. There was instruction that was given to Noah. And he followed the instruction. But within the instruction was a representation of a precept. There was something that was being represented by what Noah was doing that was bigger even than what Noah was doing. God committed a precept that when judgment is about to come, that he will give a way of escape. And here it is being played out in this dramatic scene. Noah is building an ark. In the instruction was a precept. And there are times where we look at instruction that has been given and we confuse the instruction with the precept. We hear the instruction. We we want to be obedient, but in the instruction we miss the precept. So we are following this instruction and this instruction and this instruction, and this instruction. And our lives begin to produce strife. But God never produces strife. Not with his children, not not amongst his children, and not within his children. God is the author of peace. God is presenting peace. He's giving us a message of peace. And when he gives us a a message of peace, it produces peace. But I'm following the instruction. I'm trying to do what God told me to do. But friends, there are times when we are looking at the instruction and we miss the precept. This is why Jesus said, I come not to destroy the law, but to fulfill the law. The precepts are written in the law of Moses, but if you try to only follow the law, it produces death. Friends, it's so close, it seems that I have a genuine desire. I desire to do what is right. And I'm following the instructions of God, but we miss the precepts. We miss God's intention. And in doing so, we misapply. We misunderstand the precepts. It is not just line upon line. It is precept upon precept. We're getting line upon line. I'm I'm learning what the message is. I'm I'm learning all of these things about the message. But within within that teaching, within those line upon line upon line, God is looking to do something. God is looking to build something. God doesn't give you a precept and leave it there. God gives you a precept We pray on it, it becomes part of us. And he adds to that precept. You understand this precept? Let's take for example, thou shalt not lie. Thou shalt not lie itself is the law of Moses. But it represents a precept. God cannot lie. God cannot lie. If God speaks it, it becomes. He's the creator. He will never contradict himself. He's the same. He never changes. When he presents something, he is, he, as he says, I'm God, I change not. 
He presents something to the world and he changes not. And he says, it's represented here in a line, thou shalt not lie. But if you take the line and don't have the precept, the letter killeth. Well, brother, I've got this part, I've got this part, but do we understand the picture of what God is looking to accomplish in us, in you? And then how do we measure it? How do I know if I'm actually seeing a precept or I'm just seeing the instruction of God in a legalistic way? How do I know that I'm not overstepping the target? Not just hitting the target. Are we... It's so simple, it's like this. God, there's something that's set here. God tells you to do this. I want you to move this over here. God's word, perfectly fulfilled. And to us, we look at it like there's shades of gray, did I do it right? I'm insecure about it, and God said just do this and move it there. We may not understand all of it. We may not know, understand how it fits in the bigger picture. But God just said, do this from here and move it there. And we do it. That's representing something bigger. There's a precept that God is expressing. He will do it in your life. He will do it in the situations that are taking place in the assembly. He is presenting his precept, and it's, friends, I tell you what, the simplest things are the hardest things to preach. What I see right now, I see a picture that's so simple, it's difficult to express it in words, but it's so simple. Let us continue looking at what Brother Branham is saying here. Don't presume, believe. Don't venture out without authority, without scriptural authority. Samson presumed, oh well, my, oh I know I, I've, I, can't, I can't get my locks anymore, but I presume it's all right. I'm still the same old guy. I'm, you know, I, I'm, really, I'm really a good person. I made, the, I, you know, I, I, it was just a little mistake and here Samson, we know what Samson does, and he, he goes and he does what, all the things that transpired. And what is in his heart is, I'm following the law. I'm fulfilling it. He thinks this. But when he misses the precept, he's now a million miles off, but he thinks he's right there. He's presuming, he's stepping without authority, and there are times, friends, when we, we take God's word and we want to step out in, in life and we want to make decisions in life, but we're stepping out without the authority of God's instruction. But God gave this instruction to someone else, and we know that when God does it one way, he does it the same all the time. Yes, again, then why are we not all boat builders? Right? But he does it the same all the time, yes, but what he does the same all the time is the precept, the character within the instruction. And we look at the instruction and we take the instruction and we miss by a, mi a million miles God's a desire, God's precept that he's looking to express because we're following the instruction, but the instruction isn't meant for us. A million miles off. How can we possibly understand how can we possibly have confidence in God's word? Is it the instruction? Maybe the instruction was given to a certain person. I'll give you another example of this. Let's say you have two people that are, they grow up in different ways and for one of them, there's a temptation. And they, they really, if they're just around us at all, they're pulled into it, it's a temptation to them. For the next person, it's not a temptation. God will press on that one person. You stay away from that stuff completely. Don't go anywhere near it. And for the next person, God says, you go this way. And they don't even think about it, but they're in the presence of those things that are evil. And it's a, it's a, it's a real temptation to this other person. So here is this person just walking along, and the other person that God said, you stay away from that stuff, they look at the other person and say, wow, you hypocrite. I heard the instruction of God. God told me to stay away from that. And look at you. you look at you walking so close to that. 
Look at you doing all those things. And that person is innocent in their heart. They're not tempted by it. They walk right by it and they're not tempted by it. But the instruction given to one, that person makes an assumption that God gave the same instruction to the other person. They missed the precept in what God was giving them. God was protecting them. In the instruction they were given, there's a precept. The precept changes not. God does not change. He never changes his precept because the precept is his character. He never changes the precept. He takes the truth. We look at the the message of Luther. Luther was a tremendous man. He was a mighty man of mighty man of God in his age. He stood up against the Catholic Church. We know that he split the world wide, wide open. The, the anointing that was upon him, the, the ministry of Luther, brought the world out of the dark ages. Do you realize that? Split the world wide, wide open. There was no church. There was no, there was no uh, Christian religion outside of the Catholic Church. And he takes a step, and, and, and he, he splits the world, uh, splits the religious world open. But you can't go back and say, well, I'm going to take the life of Luther and apply it to the day that I'm living in. He hated Jews. He wanted to kill all the Jews. He hated, if, if, he believed that if someone rose up against the, the king, that they should be killed. He, he was... He was bearing the light of the day, the moment that he's living in. Now the light that was there, the light that was there, the life that was there was of God. I am God and I change not. The life that is there with Luther moves on to the next day. But what does the world do? God told me to go this way. I'm following Luther. Praise the Lord, I'm following Luther, I'm free of the Catholic Church, and they're walking, walking. And God says, turn right. I've got another messenger, his name is Wesley. And they come up to the edge, yeah, but I really like going this way. Off the edge they go, right? They heard the instruction, but they missed the precept. They came right up to the edge and God said, now it's a change of instruction. They may not understand the whole precept, but the instruction changes and they deny the instruction of God and in it, they deny the precept of God. This is important, friends, because we may never understand, as we sit here today, we are never going to understand individually every one of God's instructions. I can say that because the Bible says, to each is given a measure of faith. But you might be given part, you're given part, you're given part, you're given part. The body is representing the precepts of God. The fullness of God's thoughts, the fullness of God's precepts are presented in a body walking on the the, the shores of Galilee. Here's a little man that comes walking and he just looks kind of rough and he's, he's not much to look at it. And yet all of God's precepts are represented in that one body. That one natural body. Here in the last days, God is looking to present all of his precepts in one body. He said, you are my body. You are my hands. You are my feet. We get the instruction of God. God gives you instruction to do such and such. More than anything, more than any contention, more than any uh, any other, anything that causes contention, more than anything that causes disagreement, I have seen time after time where God has given instruction and it is taken as a precept and applied to everything that someone has seen. And suddenly, If you don't believe like me, you're out. But here's the thing, friend. The instruction to them might have been of God. This is where things get so fine down, so to speak, we're splitting hairs. 
Because God gives an instruction to an individual and they're walking in the instruction that God gave them, but that instruction was not for everyone. But in the instruction was a precept. In the line was a precept. Let's take another example of that. I stand here today as a minister of the gospel. Is everyone here today called to be a preacher? To preach from behind a pulpit? No, of course not. Each called to a part, I have a line that I have to fulfill. God called me to fulfill a role, a time, a place. You stand here, you do this. But then God is calling you, each of you that God is calling, that God is pulling on, he's calling you to fulfill a specific line. Well, brother Nathaniel, you're talking about the body working together again. This is something that's always on my heart. Why is it? Because as you get in place as an individual, as you're walking with the Lord, the very next thing that begins to happen is God begins to put you in context, in place. It's no longer just about you. It's line upon line, precept upon precept. As you're being, being uh, God is calling you, he's pulling you to be in place, you begin to work with others, you begin to see others. How can that happen? When you think, if you are perceiving that the instruction that God gave you is exactly the same instruction as the next person. This is so confusing, has been confusing over the years, and has caused so much strife. Well, God gave me instruction. God gave me different instruction. Well, that can't be of God. God can't give you one instruction, give me a different instruction. That means that God changes. No, no it doesn't. Because within the instruction is a precept. Within the instruction is the mind of God and what you are expressing together is the mind of God. One part is doing one part, Another part is doing another part. Now that's something that the church must not do. You're not sure of yourself if you're just presuming for you're taking it for granted. Don't presume, believe. Don't venture out without authority, without scriptural authority. Samson presumed. Oh, well, oh my, I, I, ain't, I ain't got my locks anymore, but I presume it's all right. I'm still the same old guy. No, no, brother. You've crossed the separating line. He presumed he had just as much strength and said, I'll just stretch myself. I'll just stretch myself. I'll just stretch out a little bit. Oh, whew. Now, I just, I'm just as good a man as I ever was. But he found that his strength was gone. Friends, there's so much instability, and, and the young people that are, let's, let's go back to this again. The younger ones that are sitting here today. When I was your age, when I was 19, 20, 21 years old, I hated that stage of life so much. Because all I wanted was to be confident, I wanted to know where I fit, and I didn't know where I fit. And it ate me up inside. It tore me up. But the, the, things, that, the things that the Lord began to teach me as I, I stand here today, it's now been these years and I've, I look back and I watch how the Lord was teaching me to walk, not by sight, but by faith. To walk by faith in his word and to be confident to stand here today and, and stumble through trying to explain something that's so difficult to explain, but it's so valuable, it's so treasured, that if by the grace of God we can catch a glimpse of it, it helps us to stand with confidence. And when, when we're trying to find our place in life, and this is true of not just the younger ones, but older ones, trying to find a place in life, you have to find the instruction of God for you. That's hard. That's hard. Because you have to understand that the instruction for you is maybe different than the next person. God called each one to a different place, and that means it's different. The details might look different, but within it is a precept. And the precept never changes. The instruction might be specific for the date and time, but within it is God expressing something. 
No, no, brother, if you go beyond that, no, no, you've crossed the separating line. He presumed that he had just as much strength. Now let's go to 2 Peter, the first chapter. We want to take this these thoughts and, and apply it and look at it as an example. You find your place there, just say amen if you would. Now, I was talking to Brother Jeremy last night, and he mentioned that Brother Kyle had preached on perfect love, God to love on Wednesday. And I told Brother Jeremy at the time, I said, well, you, you can be a witness to me that these things, some of these things were in my notes, and they're not because of what Kyle preached, Brother Kyle preached on Wednesday. So if we're looking at any things that, that tie and continue that thought from Wednesday that was not intentional, that's just the Lord doing that. 2 Peter, the first chapter, let's read verses 2 to 11. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God, of our Lord Jesus, of Jesus our Lord. According as his divine power hath given unto us all the things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. Whereby are we given unto us, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust, and besides this, giving all diligence, added to your faith virtue and to your virtue knowledge. We're going to stop there just for a moment. If we look at this subject, and let's take this, this thought of the capstone is love, divine love. Verse number seven, into godliness, brotherly kindness, into brotherly kindness, charity, or love. The top of this is love. This is how simple that God gives us his precepts. Now we could look at this and say, is this instruction? Is this a precept of God? And this is both. This is a precept of God and this is the instruction of God. He says, add to your faith virtue. There's just one element of this that I want to focus on. Add to your faith. Add to your faith. Everyone that is sitting here today, you can read through these scriptures, and by the grace of God, you can find where you are in these instructions. All of us here today are somewhere on our journey growing in the Lord within these instructions. Add to your faith virtue. Well, brother, I, I've heard this before. I don't mean to, to criticize anyone, but this is, this is really what has been said. Go through the instructions of God, and, and, and someone might present this as an idea that, well, we live in this age, so I'm going to go straight to divine love. Love is, you know, the message is here. God is doing such a mighty work. So I'm just going to go right to the capstone. I'm going to go right to... I believe, I believe that this is the truth and, and God is love and therefore I'm going to be full of love and I'm just going to be, I'm going to epitomize everything that God is intending. But God gave instruction here. He said, add to your faith virtue. Virtue is strength. Add to your faith. What happens if you don't have faith? How much love can you have if you don't have faith? None. 
How much virtue can you have? How much strength can you have if you have no faith? None. How much knowledge can you have if you don't have virtue? None. Because God said, add to. See, as God is building throughout the church ages, church age upon church ages, things that have been building, in you, God is looking to do the exact same thing. A principle, a precept of God is that he is building line upon line. And everywhere that God is building, he's doing the same thing. In the ages, God is doing it. In the age that we're living in, the hour that we're living in, God is doing it. God is doing it in you as an individual. If God is working in you, he is building something. I don't believe it's a coincidence that the first message that we have recorded is faith is a substance. Go back and listen to that message and really carefully go through what Brother Branham is talking about and see if your faith measures up, measures up to what Brother Branham is referring to. I would challenge that sometimes our understanding of how, how faith even works doesn't align with what Brother Branham described. He said God, God has a faith, Satan does it, does things, God does things, and they said, well, Who's doing that? Who's making those things move? And he says, neither one. That's me. That's me as an individual. His faith was accomplishing something. And if you've been born in a message church, born, raised, you might be a wonderful person. Much better person than you could look around and And maybe you measure up to be better than the people around you. The Bible says, compare not yourselves among yourselves. But if you look around, well, you know, I'm a pretty good person. I'm a pretty good person. But if you don't have faith, there's nothing to build on. There's nowhere to go. There's nothing to add to. If you don't have virtue, knowledge, Brother Branham explained this, knowledge is when something you you have applied your faith Something has taken place. It's no longer faith. It's knowledge. I now know it. I don't have to say, well, uh, you know, I believe that God is a healer. God is a healer. It's knowledge to me. I've seen it. It's now knowledge. I've built upon, by the grace of God, faith than virtue. I'm seeing it take place. And as God is looking that you would grow up in the Lord, he's building line upon line, precept upon precept, within you and to just read the words is not what God is after God is is after having a private conversation with you so that you can understand where you are and this is the beautiful part friends that when God identifies you and he identifies you in the scripture you just take it's like this when God identifies you in the scripture like we use the example we're walking along and we come to the edge of the instruction that God has given us. And God is, God is dealing with you in your life. And you say, well, Lord, I want to know what the next step is. If you read the scriptures and it's just instruction and there's this one and there's this one. And there are many things in the Old Testament that I don't understand. There are many types and shadows that are taking place. I don't understand them. But there are precepts that are being represented. And if I understand the precept, I can follow the precept. And when when I come to a place and God is pointing out, he says, now son, this is where you're at in your walk. Okay, Lord, I believe it. I may not be representing everything that God wants me to represent quite yet, but I'm headed in that direction. And when I find, I'm looking at, the Lord sits me down, and I just kind of narrate it this way. He says, now son, you got these weaknesses in your life. And I look at those weaknesses and I say, well, Lord, I want to know what to do next. What do I do? The Lord begins to deal with this and he'll set you where you are in scripture. And this is the beautiful thing. When God sets you in the scripture, do you know what to do? You know what to, to, how to find out what to do next? Well, Lord, I stopped. I don't want to go any further. Your instruction told me to come this far. I don't want to go any further. What do I do? And God shows you where you are in the Scripture, and he says, now now read the next verse. And if you've caught the mind of God, if God has pointed you to where you are in the Scripture, you read the next verses, and it simply tells you what to do. 
you find yourself in the pattern of God, you simply follow the pattern. And God is looking that his precepts are so personal, so real to us, that he puts you in a situation. He'll put you in a trial. He'll put you in a place where you're under tremendous pressure. And in that situation, you say, well, Lord, what do I do? What do I do? And he says, what do you think? But Lord, I don't know. He says, but I've been teaching you. You've come through trials. You've come through situations. What did he say to Moses? Moses, I had you on the backside of the desert. You already went through your education. You're standing before this great challenge before you. Moses, why are you crying? Moses, why cry? Speak. He had been going through his lessons. He's learning. He's growing through his lessons. Just like you are going through your lessons. God is teaching us. We're teaching us, oh, brother, I'm in this trial. And, and I just, I, I come out of the trial and I go right back into another trial. It's, it's almost the same thing over and over and over again. Right, because you haven't learned a lesson yet. You want to stop going through the same trial? Learn the lesson. You learn the lesson, what do you do in school? You pass the grade, what do you do? You go to the next lesson. And once in a while, the devil, or the, the devil will come along and the Lord will allow it. The Lord allows the lesson to come along again. And as that lesson comes along, it, you know, years ago or, or maybe last week, you go through the same situation and suddenly you're like, yeah, I, I mean, I see it happening, but it's fine. It's okay. And someone else has worked up. They say, well, why aren't, you, why aren't you disturbed by this? Why aren't you bothered? Because I've already been through that. I already learned that precept. Where I'm standing, that no longer matters. It doesn't matter anymore what trial I'm going through, what situation I'm going through. It no longer matters. Because where I'm standing is clearly identified in God's precepts. I'm standing so clearly not just following the instruction. And, and, and I hope that that makes sense today. The instruction of God to one, again, we use the example of Noah. We're not all boat builders. We're not all boat builders. We're not all doing exactly the things that someone else in another age has done. But there was a precept that was represented. And God never changes. He's building precept upon precept upon precept. If we're standing in those things, there is no contention. There is nothing to argue about. There is no strife. Why? Because we're standing not in the, the details. Uh, what, what comes to mind is, I don't know if you've ever seen a, oh, this is a, anyone work with mathematics at all? I know, not very popular, is it? <laughs> it's got a bad rap. H anyone seen those little, they have a chart and they have all these dots on it. You ever see that? How they all these, these dots on a, on a chart? And all it is is a bunch of dots. But what's interesting is that all of those random, seemingly random points, if you analyze them, you look at them, I'll just say it this way, if you analyze them, you can draw a line that represents where all of those dots are pointing to. They would call it a trend line. And there's this line through all what seems like chaos, there's a line that balances it all out. There's a line that interprets what seems like chaos. And the world that we live in seems like chaos. And times when you're trying, you're praying about, God, I want to apply your word to, to my life, it seems like chaos. But when God begins to open it in what seems like this piece here and this sermon and that sermon, well, I, don't, I didn't understand that sermon at all. I didn't understand what was said here. I didn't understand what was said there. But Lord, I feel like I don't understand what you're telling me. And, and God is just giving you a puzzle piece. And he gives you a puzzle piece. And he gives you a puzzle piece. And the day comes when he says, all right, now let me bring it all together for you. And God just lays it out. 
And the picture comes together. <gasps> oh, it seems random, but it's not. I'm reading this line and I'm reading that line and I'm reading all these details, but through all of it, God is bringing together a picture. And right through all of it, God brings together a picture in your life and you begin to see it. Oh, I thought I understood all of these lines. I understood all these details. But in the midst of it, God was presenting a precept. We can read the front of the book and study and analyze and try to understand what God is saying. But we cannot break our way into the back of the book. We have to look at the instruction that God is giving to us individually, each one that's sitting here today. You look at the instruction that God is giving you and build line upon line, precept upon precept. By God's grace, as God is, God is doing the work, when God begins to bring the pictures together, the precept is what he's after. He's, he's looking to present, my, I wish I had a grander way to say it. We take those things and we take them so, so limited. The grandness of God's word is so astounding. I'm just gonna say it like this for you today, Saint. If you have a question before God or you have something that you're praying about, God has been writing all of these lines. Brother Branham gave us a wonderful story, a little example of this is a letter that was written to him. You know, if a letter was written for his wife, from his wife, he said anyone else could read that letter, but I'm the only one that reads between the lines. I'm the only one that's used the teardrop. And God is writing your, li your life line upon line. But as he begins to bring out what he intends to express, the meaning in the words is bigger than the words. How is it that Br Brother Branham might say something, he might, uh, you know, uh, uh, misstate a fact or something to that effect, and, and people will jump on that? How is it that he can make such a, what seems like an error, but then also be speaking the truth. Because the message, the precept that's being presented is greater than that. We can fumble around and we stumble around and we try to do things for God and we make mistakes, but in it, God is presenting something that's greater than the sum of all of our mistakes. It's greater than the sum of anything that we're striving to do as an individual. And again, for the younger ones here, God is, is doing something, can be doing something in you, if that's your desire. Can be doing something in you that's so great that God will establish you and it's personal to you. God's not going to make this big show. It's not going to be something that everyone's like, ooh, you're a super Christian. God's not looking to do that. But God is looking to, in you, you said you, you want miracles to happen, you want something miraculous to take place in your life, if God does it, it'll be done in private. And then you want to go tell someone else and you can't. You can tell them about it and they look at you, I was talking to a brother on the way to, to service this morning, we we're talking about the world that we're living in, people could look at the miracles of God. God could do something, it, you know, the blind could see, the, the lame could walk, and the world would look at it and say, huh. I don't, I don't believe that. Or, how did that happen? Couldn't have been God. Show me a sign, show me a sign, and a sign is shown, and they see, I don't believe it. God's not doing that for the world. What God is looking to build in us is confidence, only going as far as the Word has described for us to go, and no further because it's already perfect. Line upon line, precept upon precept. I'm gonna invite the musicians to come.
I invite you all to stand if you would with me. You love the Lord today? If we can sing that little song, let your word be born in the manger of my heart. Friends, there are so many, there's so much spiritual work that needs to be done. When I look at myself and I say, Lord, I, I want to be living your precepts every day. I want to, when I, when I speak, when I live, when I walk, when I go to work, I want to live your precepts. The very mind of God, I, I want to do those things so badly, but how do I get there? How do I take one step with confidence? How do, how do I just move forward and, and never be swayed? How do I move forward? And, and, you know, there are times where people will, if you stand for God, people will disagree with you. But it doesn't mean that we're disagreeable. We want to be truly with the love of God as God is building in us as we saw there in 2 Peter. We want to get to truly divine love. It's different than what people think about. I'm not going to, I'll save that for, by the grace of God, the brothers will continue to minister on that, I'm sure. But those, these things are different than what people imagine. And the reason why they can't, uh, they can't go there, they don't have a vision of it, is because they're trying to apply their understanding, they're trying to apply the lines, they're trying to apply their natural understanding of the Scriptures, and the natural understanding of the Scriptures cannot produce God's precepts. I will say today, friends, I wish I had a, a grand way to express this. It's just what's in my heart, it's so simple, it's, it's hard because it's simple but it really comes down to absolute obedience to whatever God says never going any further never going short never going left never going right when God lays it out to hit exactly what he says and in that friends we can walk in such confidence that when Satan comes and tempts us we have an anchor that's so strong that we're not even affected by it. We're not even affected by the things that are going on in the world around us. Let's sing this little song.
present help in the time of need let us go before the Lord once again in prayer and ask that God will do what no man can do lead us and guide us and do only his perfect will you know the years ago I remember it was said you pray you know Lord do whatever it takes people would say well be careful when you pray that because you know it it could be really hard but you know friend I encourage you today just tell the Lord Lord whatever it takes my one desire is that when the trumpet sounds I'm standing there with you on the other side 
when we're called to gather in the air, that we're caught up to meet Him. We, we, if we set any priority on what we desire, God said, if you're ashamed of me, then I'll be ashamed of you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, there are so many transitions and seasons that are coming to an end. God, as we are here today, Lord, I realize more and more every day that we cannot do anything without you. There's a reason why the capstone is saying grace, grace. Lord Jesus, I pray that you will have mercy, that your grace will overflow in this assembly. Lord, we're not worthy in ourselves, but Lord Jesus, we've set aside our own thoughts. And we've taken up your thoughts. Lord, we stand clean, confident before you that you are doing the mighty work that you claimed, that you set out to do. Lord, we know that you're doing it. Lord, I pray that you will bless these people mightily. Bless the saints, Lord, as they're struggling sometimes in life. Lord, I pray that the, the things that we have looked at today, I, Lord, I've stumbled over my words. Forgive me. Lord, I pray that your people will catch it anyway. Lord, I pray that you will make the words simple and plain, that the children can understand. God, I pray that you will heal those that are sick. I pray, Lord, that you will lead those that are struggling to find direction. God, I pray that you will help us, Lord, in the months ahead. Satan would love to destroy the work that you have set out to do. But God, we're trusting in you. Lord, I'm trusting in you today. I pray, Lord Jesus, that the testimonies will abound. God, I pray that you will continue to have your way. Truly, Lord, may your word be born in us. When the road is hard and it's weary, we will remember to walk by your precepts, that we will forget not the words that echo in our hearts of how faithful and true and just that you are. God, I pray that you will have your way this afternoon. Be with the saints as they go. Lord, and tomorrow as we face the week, we face the work that we have in front of us. Lord, I pray that you would encourage them then also and bring them through their week. Heavenly Father, may you be glorified in all things. In Jesus' name, amen. So in the road you walk, Your strength is gone. Your heart feels tall. Remember, God is waiting in the storm. Take courage for the battle is the Lord. In the road you.
and give me more revelation that my flesh be all forsaken that the word of God guide me on my way so he can have preeminence each day. Give me more revelation. Let my life be your reflection. For I know this word is my redemption. Give me the glory you alone are worthy of all the praise you alone are worthy of all the
have heard the message, Shalom, and all is well.